Grace and peace. We're so glad that you could join us for worship this morning. This is going to be a little bit different as we're trying to figure this out along with you. Uh, when we sing the hymns this morning, the hymnal page is going to pop up on your screen, uh, and so you'll be able to follow along with that. There'll be some other times where we're kind of going in and out and trying to figure out what we're doing, so bear with us as, as we're getting all of this down. Um, Iris is going to play an intro, so I want to invite you now. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please join with me in our call to worship as we read together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Faithful shepherd, your sheep are scattered. And for many of us, it is in isolation and loneliness and anxiety and fear that we call out to you. We long for the green pastures and still waters, but we would settle for simply being together. Remind us that even as we walk through the darkest valley, you are with us. Remind us that through the power of your Holy Spirit, we are together, inextricably bound to one another and to you. That is what we celebrate in this season, that in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we are at one with you and with each other, living life together, not just now, but always. Let your spirit of life touch whatever in us is hurting, or broken or dead and raise us up to live again. May we be filled with your love 
so that Christ can live in us and through us. It is in his holy name that we give ourselves to you. Amen. And now we're going to join together in singing our first hymn, Morning Has Broken. The words will come up on your screen. You may stand in body or simply in spirit as we sing together. We will not be having a unison prayer of confession this morning, but rather we invite you to join uh, your hearts from home. There will be a time at the end of our prayer of confession for silent confession, and we invite you to say them aloud or in your heart at home. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, provider, protector, Restore of our souls. We read scripture, we hear your promises. We confess that in the midst of anxiety and fear, even though we do those things, we have doubts. We wonder what will happen with jobs, with school. We wonder if we can teach our kids at home this long. We wonder when we will get a break. We wonder if we are sick. We wonder what is safe. Our minds, O oh God, they wonder and they wander. Forgive us. Forgive us for the many ways we doubt your providence. For missing our neighbor in the midst of the frenzy. For not accepting that we're all just doing the best we can. Remind us once more of your grace, like those still abundant waters we read of in scripture, so that we might find ourselves once more a sheep of your own fold. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, God's grace abounds. God is with you in the midst of the darkness. And God provides a way forward. In the midst of whatever Lenten wilderness you may find yourselves in today, know that God is there. That God created you and God loves you and that you are forgiven. 
Know that you are enough. What you are doing is enough. And be at peace. So I invite you to follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children of the light. Walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up as an offering and sacrifice to God for the forgiveness of our sins this day and forevermore. Thanks be to God. As many of you may know, this is our Lenten devotional. It's a book for our families to wonder about the Lenten story and to introduce our children and our youth uh, to what they might see during Lent and why it happens. And so each week we've been reading from this book and uh, I find it very interesting. I know that the Spirit of God is in this place because this part of the book this week is called Making Space. So you can, I think that's kind of funny that we're going to talk about making space this week. So last week we talked about uh, Jesus in the desert and the time he made for God. After Jesus came back from the desert, he left everything behind. Trusting God to give him what he needed, he began to travel from place to place, telling everyone who would listen about God and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the world the way God imagined it in the very beginning, the way God wants it to be. Many people came to hear Jesus. They were full of questions. What is the kingdom of God? Where is it? How do we get there? Well, Jesus told them, the kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed that grows into a huge plant, so big and so strong that birds can build nests in it. The kingdom of God is like a pinch of yeast stirred into a big mixing bowl of flour. It is only a speck, but it makes a big batch of dough rise. The kingdom of God is inside you but it needs time and space to grow. This is how we make space. If you have done wrong, tell God you are sorry. Sweep your heart clean and start fresh. Be kind to all people, not just the ones who like you. Open your heart wide. If someone hurts you, ask God to help you forgive. Don't store up angry thoughts. Let them go. Make space inside for better things. And share so that everyone has enough. If you have two coats, give one to someone who has more. Why clutter up your life with more than you can use? Make space for what really matters. Next week, we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer, and I invite you over the next week for you to think of ways how you can make space. Do you need to tell God that you're sorry? How can you be kind to someone and not just the ones who like you? How can you ask God to help you forgive? How can you let go of angry or anxious thoughts? 
so that we can make space inside for better things. I invite you to pray with me. I will, read part, I will say part of the prayer and I invite you to join in repeating after me. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you for our church family. God, help us remember to make space physically, but also to remember to make space in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, we breathe in your abundant grace. And we exhale all that hinders us and is holding us back. God, we pray that your spirit might breathe new life into the space where we are. That we might know that it is your spirit that connects you at all times to us and us to each other. God, we pray that your spirit would illumine your word to us, Paul's letter to the Ephesians in Psalm 23. Help us to learn what you need us to learn in this time. May we be vessels of your abundant grace and your everywhere spirit. Amen. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to Ephesus. It's going to be chapter 5, verses 1 through 2a, and verses 8 through 14. Listen now for the word of God. Paul says, Be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. So live as children of light. For the fruit of life is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Ash Wednesday, I embarked on the journey I knew that would be challenging of giving up Amazon for Lent. Little did I know how challenging this actually would be. <laughs> I'm happy to report that I have somehow not placed any Amazon orders this week or last. We'll see how long I last, but I'm trying to hold out. It's crazy to think about how minor that thing I gave up for Lent was, especially now, a mere three weeks later. I find it ironic that here we are in a season of Lent. Here we are in the midst of our own wilderness, that we didn't ask for. This week, we have been thwarted into new routines, and some of us have had to learn that dreaded technology. Some of us are learning how to make do with meals or food they didn't expect to have to eat. Ask Will about our shepherd's pie on Monday, or should I say shepherd's pie? Some of us have little ones at home and are suddenly teachers and parents and employees somehow all at the same time. Some of us are feeling the pang of silence and an empty house. Some of us are looking at depleting bank accounts and wondering when or how we will afford the future. 
Some of us are left looking at ourselves and our purpose in all of this. I admit that I am actively fighting over functioning across many caregivers there at a time like this. It is easy to sit in the wilderness and wonder, what if? What if? What if? I'm starting to understand just how tempting the devil was to Jesus in the desert. There are lots of unknowns in wilderness. So in this Lenten wilderness, the lectionary gives us a gift, a reminder. Just like Jesus reminds us in the desert that one does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Our two scripture passages this morning invite us into comfort and courage. Comfort. Psalm 23 is a psalm of trust. It is often read at funerals, and rightly so, as it reminds us of whose we are in the midst of grief and chaos. It reminds us that when our lives are shaky and uncertain, that God is steadfast. We are God's, and God is our shepherd, providing for us, protecting us, restoring us. This week, we are invited to take comfort that even though we walk through this darkness, this our wilderness, God will provide. It might look different in the ways that we anticipate, but God will provide. We need to remember this ancient psalm that has provided comfort to countless souls. Psalm 23 reminds us that it is God who cares for us. God who guides us, and God who is with us in every step of this. God restores us, restores and renews our weary souls. God is our light in the darkness, and we are children of the light. That leads me to our next scripture reading. Courage. Paul's letter to Ephesus has a lot in it, but what we're going to look at today is a small part where Paul reminds them and us that because we are children of the light, because we are a sheep of God's own fold, we are called to live as children of the light. Our third and fourth grade Sunday school curriculum is called Growing in Grace and Gratitude, and I love it because it's at the crux of what we believe as Presbyterians. We believe that we are a sheep of God's own fold, that God has abundant mercy and grace for us, and we are claimed by God. But that is not where the story ends. We believe that because we are owned and named and claimed by God, and that God is our provider, that we must live a life in gratitude that we must live as children of God's light in the midst of all of this darkness. It starts us in Psalm 23. We are God's. But we don't just sit at home and take comfort in that. We take that and we live into it. We share it, we spread it, and we illumine all that is good and right and true in the world. God is in the midst of this, and God gives us the courage to live a life that points to that light in the darkness. In the midst of our anxiety and our stress, our fear of the unknown, we cannot forget each other. I love that this past week has marked the earliest spring in 124 years. Because it's reminded me that while it seems like our world has stopped, flowers are still blooming. Waters are still carrying down rock slides. We're able to sit by the still waters and be reminded who walks with us. We're able to look at the sunshine and feel the warmth on our faces. We are able to look at flowers blooming. We are able to hear the birds singing God's praises. And these are God's promises to us. 
That while we feel like our world has stopped, God's creation is giving birth to a new season filled with beauty and blessings. God's light for us is in abundance. And I know it because I see it in more than just outside in nature. It's funny, usually in my research for sermon or Bible studies, I inevitably come across somebody who's written an article about how social media actually makes people feel more distance or promotes more discord, promotes fear. And, and let's be honest, Facebook hasn't exactly made the news for bringing people together lately. But what I've seen this week has humbled me. It has shown me that social media and the internet have actually brought people together in life-giving ways. Just this week, some folks in our youth group who have, been, who have been video messaging back and forth, introducing each other to our pets, our homes, our lives in a new way. Just this week, folks who have been able to go to Bible study groups that they haven't been to for years because they moved away. Just this week, people have been able to be connected to folks they haven't been connected to in a while. In the midst of our anxiety and our stress and our fear, we can't forget each other. Now, I know, we have all had a long week. And now Bridgely is trying to add more to our plate and asking us how we can figure out how to serve God while we're at home. Guess what, I am. Because a phone call to someone you're thinking of, reaching out to, with a simple email to someone, adding extra money to the tip at a local delivery service, sharing your art and music online, sending a grocery gift card to a family you know is struggling, texting a parent in our congregation that what they're doing is enough. Even choosing to stay at home and do your part and flattening the curve, it takes seconds. It takes seconds to make that space in your heart. It takes seconds to be the church, to be the children of God's light. And these seconds, they become minutes, they become hours, they become memories that instantly shed light in the midst of a dark time for somebody. My yoga studio, Concha Hopkins, is owned by two amazing women that I love dearly. I started going when I moved there last April, and I literally go every day because it's kept me sane in my own wilderness of chronic illness. They decided on Thursday of last week to close their doors in care of their own community. They decided as leaders to set an example of caring for the community by closing. So on Saturday morning, the studio posted on Instagram that there would be a free class on Zoom, a platform for video messaging and chat. They gave an hour's notice. Now, I was excited about this because that's what I was craving. That's my Saturday morning practice, a way to unite my mind with my heart and not my nervous system. The class was packed online. The class was packed on Zoom with over 100 people, and it was at capacity. People all over Philadelphia area, all over the U.S., somehow found this, and they tuned in. And at the end of the class, the teacher held a discussion, and we all talked with one another about our specific context and how we were feeling, all of it. It actually connected me to a woman who I had been practicing with for months, who is an adolescent therapist in Devon, who works with kids that deal with stress and anxiety. And just this week, she's helped me with resources for our parents this week. What followed was someone donating a business membership, and now hundreds of people are tuning in every day at 12 o'clock to care for themselves, to breathe, to be grounded, and be reminded to take comfort and have courage. Tuesday, we were blessed with the prayer of St. Patrick. Wednesday, we did breathing exercises with the serenity prayer, and I couldn't stop my tears. These women in the midst of wilderness, for so many, are reaching into the homes of people who most need it all over the nation and providing a way to process this. 
They continue to offer this out of a need they see in their community to care for mental health in a time of great stress. This, this, my friends, is living as children of the light. So this week, I encourage you to take some time to think. What can I take comfort in today? What do I have the courage for today? We are all handling this in our own way. And grace abounds. We are all doing the best we can. Know that you are in the palm of God's hand. The very hand that holds the dust this Lenten season. And God will lead us through this. God will lead us through this together. Take comfort. Take heart. Have courage. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Let us say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now sing together our second hymn of the day. Last week in our time of offering, um, I told you that uh, giving as a spiritual practice it was still important for us to send in our offerings to the church, and you all responded absolutely amazingly. And so we want to thank you.
for the ways that even from afar you continue to support the life and the ministry of this congregation. Ridgely already mentioned in the sermon some of the ways that we can give ourselves to each other, helping the people around us who are still in need, and by giving ourselves to each other, we are giving ourselves to God. So go back and listen to that part again about how we can help out the, the workers, the neighbors, the people around us who are still in need. Normally this is a time uh, where we turn in prayer cards as well. If you have a prayer request this week, I encourage you, email it to me, email it to Ridgely, and we'll include it in next week's prayers and in our prayers throughout the week. This is all about finding ways to offer ourselves to God. Even though we're not in the sanctuary in worship, we can still do that in some very important ways. So for all the ways that we give ourselves to God, in celebration of the gifts that God has given to us, I want to invite you, let us join together in singing our doxology. isolation, anxiety, and fear, and our government leaders that they would provide for the needs of the people. We ask your blessing upon Larry, Melissa, Scott, John and Barbara, Marie, Ridgely, Annie, Maury and Jenny for the continued healing that they each and all need. We ask your blessing upon all those who have cancer. Cindy, Debbie, Mari, Henrietta. That they would find in you the strength and the healing that they need. We ask your blessing upon all those struggling with addiction depression, and mental illness, especially in this lonely, isolating time. Stephen and David, and all those at the Tuesday night meeting. And we lift up to you, Lord, the prayers that are on our hearts. Hear our prayers, God of grace. And help us to fulfill them, working according to your purpose in peace, justice, and mercy in all we do. We offer ourselves to you in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ the Lord, praying together the words that Christ taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. For our benediction today, I'd like to offer what was read at the end of that first yoga class. It's called Prayer for a Pandemic. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those that have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Amen. Go from this place and live as children of the light, taking heart, taking comfort, having courage. Amen. Go in grace and peace to serve the Lord.